the show. It is uh, 617 on your drive into work this morning as we kind of get the uh, Wednesday trading day ready to go here. Uh, markets are kind of uh, gearing up this morning. Futures are pointing up a bit today after uh, a pretty big sell off yesterday. Again, uh, with futures up today. Uh, again, the, the the theory here is is that uh, trade talks with China are still on. This is the big thing that, as I said a moment ago, has been weighing on the markets. Of course, also the government shutdown. This is another issue. We really haven't got any progress made on that as as uh, the Senate is now preparing, <laughs> preparing dueling bills uh, to try to figure out some way to get the government back into operation again. So uh, now the one the big the one big thing here about the government being shut down is that we're now starting to get into a delay of economic reports. So a lot of the economic reports that markets depend upon uh, to look at in terms of gauging uh, sentiment and, and growth, etc. Those are now all being delayed. So again, a lot of this data that the markets are going to be dealing or, or usually deal with isn't going to be available. So it could increase volatility in the, in the markets temporarily because a lot of people will be just working on assumptions. Uh, so we're going to be really moving more and more, at least over the next few days uh, to next few weeks, uh, more and more to headline driven news. So again, you know, yesterday market sells off pretty big. Uh, because of headlines coming out that uh, trade deals with China, the, the trade negotiations are off with China on this, uh, this preliminary meeting. Uh, late yesterday afternoon, market pops because, well, Larry Kudlow says, well, no, they're, they're, they're still on. And then so it's just going to be this back and forth. So, so watch out for volatility here. Um, we've had a very, very good run since the December 24th lows we've talked about over the last few days. You know, good opportunity. Uh, and yesterday was kind of a wake-up call because, again, markets can turn very quickly. Uh, so we've been talking about over the last week or so, you know, if you've got a 401k plan, you've got money invested, uh, this is a good time just to try to shore up some of that risk. You know, a lot of people kind of got caught, uh, you know, uh, flat-footed uh, with that sell-off in November and December, got their statements, and they're like, whoa, you know, what happened here? Uh, well, that's that's what can happen. Um, you know, we've gotten into a period over the last few years where markets have been very complacent. Um, asset prices just kind of rise. We don't worry about it. You know, we stick money in our 401k plan. It just magically grows, uh, you know, every month. And we haven't really had to worry about it until now. So if that last couple of months have really kind of weighed on you uh, in terms of kind of keeping you up at night, so to speak, a uh, good opportunity to, to take advantage of this rally, rebalance some risk, lower your exposure to the markets, and, and understand that, that things do happen. And you can lose a lot of money very quickly in the markets. Markets are fraught with risk that, you know, over the last you know, decade, and it's been that long, it's, it's hard to believe, but, you know, a decade ago, we had this major financial crisis that most people have forgotten about. And, you know, people lost 50% of their money. They lost homes, they lost businesses, they lost houses, um, they lost jobs. I mean, it's, you know, those types of events are not uncommon to the economy throughout time. There are periods of time where we can go through a very long cycle uh, because of, of uh, support or interventions or growth or whatever it is, where you don't have you know, big, big major corrections, but then there's times that these things happen. And currently, we're in an environment a decade later that we've got a lot of, uh, of, of issues um, that underline the economy and the markets, et cetera, that are posing a threat. Um, one thing that Ray Dalio, which is uh, one of the largest asset managers in the world, he manages you know some piddly amount, like $160 billion. Um, <laughs> he was in Davos over the weekend. And of course, this is where all the, the big... Uh, CEOs and and uh, investors in the world right now are uh, they're 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 you know, talking about how to save the world, <laughs> you know, with their with their billions. They own about half the world's wealth. They're all in Davos right now. But Ray Dalio came out yesterday talking about the, the you know the one thing that worries him is the next downturn in the market because we have accumulated so much debt, corporate debt in particular, in the markets. And this is something that we've talked about previously. Is that Corporate debt as a function of our economy is at all-time highs. This is because corporations have been using very low interest rates in order to use debt leverage um, to do things like stock repurchases, pay out dividends. But more importantly, what they've been using this debt for is non-productive investments. They haven't been using the debt in order to increase productivity and output They've been using it for really monetary efficiency. So 
the problem with this is, is that ultimately when the economy begins to downturn, the ability to pay that debt becomes much more problematic. And unlike a, a government we talked about yesterday, the fact that modern monetary theory is that, well, as long as the government can print money, they can just run up debt you know, to the moon, that corporations don't have that ability. They actually have to manufacture the money. They actually have to earn the money to pay the debt. So the risk to the markets, and this is to Ray Dalio's point, is that currently at the moment, we have more debt that is rated less than investment grade, so less than triple B rated uh, in the markets than we've ever had before. So that's that's money at risk. If you think about it this way, you know, half the people that have debt out there right now are good credit quality. These are people with 700 credit scores or better. There's a, a whole nother 50% of the ledger that have debt issued to the government, uh, sorry, debt issued to investors like you, and you probably, you there's a good, uh, there's a very high probability that in your bond funds, in your 401k plan, that in your uh, bond funds that you have or bond ETFs that you own inside of your uh, investment accounts, that you have a tremendous amount, probably more than you realize, of subquality corporate debt on your books. So you own the risk, but you, what you own is a whole bunch of, of, of your cousins that have never held a job and they they never pay back the money they borrow from you, those are the type of credit risk that are on your books right now. So understand that things like rising interest rates, slowing economic growth can really up in that apple cart very, very quickly. And that's really what Ray Dalio is talking about. But see, what Ray, what I, what Ray Dalio misses is the other problem of all this. And Sears is a good representation of that other problem. Sears has recently just filed for bankruptcy for the most part. They're going through this process. They're trying to, Eddie Lampert's trying to figure out some way to uh, keep it alive. But, you know, Sears and, and uh, which, <laughs> you know, Sears merged with Kmart. Uh, it was kind of like putting two drunks together to, to walk themselves home. Uh, somehow that was supposed to solve the problem, right? You know, two drunks make a sober. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, that was the idea. But anyway, not surprisingly, they've now wound up back in bankruptcy. Um, but but the issue there is 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 their pension. And of course, Sears had a pension for a lot of their employees. And of course, as the company goes into bankruptcy, there's no way to pay that pension. So that pension's now been been lofted over to the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, which is government's taxpayer money, that's going to wind up bailing that pension out. Uh, pensions are the real problem in this country. So, so if we X out the several trillion dollars worth of corporate debt that Ray Dalio's worried about, there's another four to five trillion dollars worth of problem in pensions. You know, we had a big debate right here in Houston uh, over the last couple of years over the <laughs> pension fund in the, in the city. Of course, um, Houston passed a bill to raise sev you know several hundred billion dollars to try to fund. Uh, uh, sorry, several hundred million dollars, a billion dollars roughly, uh, to to fund up that pension and try to solve that pension shortfall that exists. But it's not just Houston, it's Dallas, it's uh, Illinois, it's, you know, basically every municipality in the country has an underfunded pension. And the underfunded status of the pension is really just simply based on, here's the value of the pension at a 7% growth rate every year. And if I have a normal run of retirees, I should be okay. But if you actually wind up and look at the actual assets and value the assets that are on these books, the majority of these pension funds only are about 30% to 40% funded. There's a real problem there. So what happens is, is with these pensions that are all depending upon 7 and 8% rate of return still uh, to, to meet their obligations for funding, when you have another downturn of, of any significance at this point, they're so underfunded, another big contraction within the value of the pension fund gets amplified. And of course, the, the real risk here is that with a majority of retirees now moving in towards retirement, again, remember pensions for the most part were shifted off into 401k plans. So a lot of these these pensions now have a lot of, of very old people in them and they're very getting very close to retirement. And the one thing you've got to worry about is basically what's called a run on the pension. And this is when 
all of a sudden retirees that are, are in or employees that are close to retirement say, you know what, I better retire right now because if I don't, there's a real good possibility I'm not going to get my pension. So they retire in mass. And so you have this big exodus of individuals. This happened in Dallas. Um, you know, uh, uh, year before last, uh, they had a big exodus. People really put the pension under a lot of pressure. But if you if you magnify that across the country, if you have a big exodus of individuals from these pensions at one time because they're afraid of the ability to actually collect that pension, all of a sudden you're going to magnify the problem. So now you've got not just your corporate debt problem of four to five to six trillion dollars. You've got this four to five trillion dollar problem of pensions, and that is going to be the real kind of linchpin to the next downturn. And again, to put that into perspective, those two things together are larger than the financial crisis. So uh, again, this is not some, you know, a lot of people have just simply, well, we'll never have a financial crisis again. And they're right. We're, we're probably not going to have another mortgage type crisis in our future uh, because of changes to regulations and legislations, et cetera. But every crisis is always built on a different premise. And the real problem that we've got to keep a watch on is what's happening with baby boomers, pensions, and corporate debt. That's where the real risk lays. And it's not just about um, your investment accounts. It's not about just your 401k plans. Very important because this is what a lot of us are going to depend on for retirement. <laughs> but it's also about your jobs, about the economy. This all is going to impact across the country as a whole. So, you know, you may feel secure right now, but during that crisis, there's going to be a lot of devastation across the country, economically speaking. Quick break. We're going to come back, pick up with Michael Leibowitz, CFA, check in with a little bit about the markets, what's going on. Of course, talk a little bit about um, the structure and what's happening. Don't go away. More of the Lance Roberts Show coming up right after the break. Don't go away. Catch Lance Roberts podcast later at LanceRobertsShow.com. 